Right, okay, so we're going to look at the mid-ordinate rule now. And if you remember back to looking at the trapezium rule, then, and you've got an idea of how that worked, then you're going to be pretty sorted when it comes to the mid-ordinate rule, because really the idea is much more straightforward. So, um, let's take an example. Um, let's take an example of hmm, integrating 1 over x dx between uh, 2 and 5 and let's say we have 6 strips okay so as an introduction the mid-ordinate rule is a way of numerically estimating uh, the area under the curve or between the curve and the x-axis of 1 over x between x is 2 and x is 5 Okay, so what we have is a curve, okay, between 2 and 5, so 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay, so here's our area that we want to estimate, okay? y equals 1 over x, and we're going to do it with six strips, okay? It's probably uh, better if I extend that a little bit, seeing as I've got more graph to play around with, just to extend it, 2, 3, 4, 5 there. That makes more sense. Okay, right, we're ready, we're ready. Here is the area that I'm going to work with. We're going to do it with six strips. So the first of all, what we need to really work out is how wide the strip is, okay? So the width of the strip is represented with the letter H and can be calculated by looking at the difference between five and two and dividing it by the number of strips. Okay, so that's 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So each strip has a width of 1 half. Okay, so if each strip has a width of 1 half, then how we work with this is, if you zoom in on the curve in question, okay, we look at the mid ordinates. Now these are the ordinates. Okay. Well, the ordinates of six strips would be these as well. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six strips. So these are the ordinates 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5. They are the ordinates. So we're looking at the mid ordinates. So if you're looking at the ordinates 2 and 2.5, then the mid ordinate would have to be 2.25. Okay, and what we do is we estimate this area by looking at the area of this rectangle. Okay, and as you can see, if you zoomed in like this, that this area is looking very similar to this one. So by moving that bit there, I can kind of create a rectangle. Okay. Now, obviously, we have problems with overestimation and underestimation, which we'll look at in a minute, okay? Or um, if I have time in this video, if not in the next video. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to create these rectangles. So if I draw in 
dotted lines here, like so. They're your ordinates. These are your mid ordinates. To create these rectangles, which will estimate, oh, let me go. Oh, there we are. which will estimate the area under the curve. Okay, so what we're going to need is we're going to need the heights of each of these rectangles, multiply them by the width, the width of each one is 0 0.5, okay? So if I have the height of this one multiplied by its width, that gets me the area of this rectangle, and then I just need to add all the rectangles together. So this is a job for a little table, where you will have your x's and you will have your y's. Now the x's are going to be your mid-ordinates. Now we know the first one was 2.25. So that the next one, if that's 2.25, this is 2.5, so that's 2.75. That's 3, so that's 3.25. That's 3.5, so that's 3.75. That's 4, so that's 4.25. And that's 4.5, so that's 4.75. So we have 2.25, and 4.75. Okay, so these are your mid ordinates. Then in order to get the y's, your heights of each of the rectangles, that's by plugging each of these into 1 over x. So that's 1 over 2.25. Okay, which is 4 ninths. And probably a good idea if it gives you an exact value to keep them as exact. Otherwise, I would um, be quite careful about writing them as decimals. Okay, um, if you write the, uh, these as decimals, make sure they're to something like five or six decimal places, just to make sure that your answer at the end is accurate enough. That's one of the problems you can hit otherwise. If you round each of these to two decimal places, your answer at the end, if it was required to be it to two decimal places, will likely be wrong, because you would have rounded way too early. So this one's 4 over 13. Uh, 1 divided by 3.75 is 4 over 15. You might be able to spot a pattern here, so that's 4 over 17, and that's going to be 4 over 19. <clears throat> so these are the heights of each of the rectangles. So, this is approximately the width of each of the rectangles multiplied by the sum of the heights. You can write it out this way, and that's how it's written in the formula booklet. So it's the h times each of the mid ordinates added together. Okay? So you plug that into your calculator. Uh, 4 over 15 plus 4 over 17 plus 4 over 19. Uh, then divide that by 2. The calculator has given me a nice decimal answer. So it's 0.914130079. Dot, 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 which is equal to 0.914 to three significant figures. Be very wary about if it's rounding it to a specific number of decimal places, significant figures. Okay, so that's how the mid ordinate rule works. It's quite nice and straightforward. What you need to make sure that you do is um, 
First of all, work out the width of each strip. You might want to draw out uh, on just a little a line. So in this case, just go right. I know it's going between two and five, so two, three, four, five. Okay, that would be three strips. So that would make it six strips. Okay, so I'm needing each of the mid ordinates. Okay, and they would that would allow you to then figure out what each of those mid ordinates had to be. Okay, and that's a quite a nice way of doing it. So um, I got to the problem of um, determining whether um, we had an underestimate or an overestimate. Okay. Um, so that can be fairly tricky if we're not careful. To be honest, this question is very rarely asked, but it's worth knowing, just in case. So that was um, that was the previous example. Okay. Now you could have a few different possibilities. Uh, could have a curve that looks like this. I'm going to over accentuate it just to make it clear. Or you could have a curve that looks like this. Or you could have a curve that looks like this. Uh, or you could have a curve that looks like this. Okay. Now, when you're working with the mid ordinate, then this creates a rectangle like so. Now, in these two examples, okay, um, if you draw them quite accentuated, it becomes clearer that in both of these cases, I have an underestimate. Okay? In both of these cases, I have an underestimate. And this is otherwise known as concave upwards. Okay, so the curve is concave upwards. While if you then look at this type of example, then this bit is larger than this bit. And in a similar case, if I get the middle, see it's very clear that this bit on the outside is larger than the bit that's on the inside. So this is an overestimate, and this is referred to as concave downwards. So it's all got to do with the shape of the curve, okay? Um, and it's well worth remembering, because if you had to say whether your curve was uh, an underestimate or an overestimate using the middle on the rule, um, then you'd have to draw yourself a little diagram to make sure that the examiner knew exactly what you were talking about. So the example that we looked at had to be an underestimate for this. Okay. So this is an example that you could do algebraically, okay, because the integral of 1 over x is log x. So um, that could give you the exact answer, and you could compare it with our answer for here, okay?